right, so both sides are fitting up real nice. I've got the fitment nice and tight up against the rail. You've seen some of my older videos, uh, you'll already know how badly crushed in these rails were. Uh, I had to do a lot of shaping and pulling and reworking these uh, rails to make everything kind of look normal again. And having these subframe connectors fit up pretty much with, you know, minimal modification is a huge uh, relief to me. Just lets me know that everything was done properly and uh, I'm on the right track. So one thing you'll notice is that I have the outer tabs cut off. That was from when I did my initial test fit with these connectors way back before I got these uh, rails nice and straight. Nothing was lining up so I, I ended up chopping off the outer bracket to get a little bit more adjustment in the rail to see if they'd have any chance of fitting on this car. But uh, fast forward to today, the rails are pretty much perfect and I probably could have kept the tabs on, but no big deal. I'll either uh, re-weld a new plate there or just zip a bead along the uh, seam, just like all the other spots. So here's the back of the connector. I have it nice and tight up against the new torque boxes. The subframe connector needs to sit flush with the channel or else it'll block the IRS cradle arms from swinging up. And since the torque box is a little tighter to the frame rail than a stock torque box would be, the connector has to be pushed just a little bit more inward in the back. And as you can see here, it's all fitting up perfectly. Last thing I'll point out on the lower subframe connectors is the front driver side. If you look towards the back of the rail, you can see it bend up just slightly with a little bit of a gap. That's actually supposed to be nice and flat as well, but when I was doing the frame rails, I couldn't I actually couldn't get to that part of the rail because from the top that's where the floor cross brace runs but no problem uh, we'll be cutting those out shortly because I'm gonna be also putting in through the floor subframe connectors so top and bottom subframe connectors cars gonna be rigid as hell So as you saw, I got the car all leveled out from front to back, side to side, so the weight of the chassis is evenly distributed. Since the car is basically a bare shell with nothing weighing it down, it'll be completely fine to weld in the subframe connectors. If this car had all the drivetrain and all the other components installed, then you definitely want to uh, install your connectors while the suspension is loaded to mimic the car sitting on the ground. That's because if you weld up the car with all the car's weight sitting on the jack stands under the frame, It'll cause the car to twist up and you will essentially be welding up the car in a twisted or flexed state. So when it goes on the ground, the doors might not line up or close, panel gaps may change, etc. All sorts of weird stuff. But again, since this thing is just a bare shell, there's really no extra weight from the engine or other components to twist the chassis out of shape. A quick check would be to check the doors, make sure they open and close without issue, make sure everything lines up. Here I've got everything lining up and the doors closed just as easily as they did before. Alright, so I guess the first question is going to be why do the top and bottom? Uh, and my answer to that would be first and foremost, I've already got half the floor cut out from fixing the frame rail channels. By putting a piece of tube steel in there, it'll actually reinforce the channels rather than just weld up the sheet metal back over it. I'd say like half the work is done already, so it's not going to take much to get these installed. Having these through floor connectors will go a long way in stiffening this car up. Not to mention the frame rails won't get crushed in by a jack stand ever again. The, uh, the company Griggs Racing actually makes a kit like this where you can do the top and bottom connectors. I think it's called like the World Challenge Kit or something like that. So this is very similar. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some 2x2 two two steel. I'm going to seat it flush into this channel that I cut out earlier. Uh, I have to cut out this section of the seat braces to access the rest of the channel. Basically cut a little bit of this back hump out and then run the 2x2 two two all the way back to a plate on the bulkhead and then just basically weld everything up. Time to get the grinder out.
now that the brace is out of the way, I'm going to extend the channel all the way back to here. And that will expose the entire frame rail channel for the 2x2 to slot into. Now that the channels are opened up, I'm going to go ahead and fix that one spot on the frame rail I showed earlier. I've got the lower connector in place underneath, so when I start hammering on this thing, nothing will move too far down. The lower connector is basically acting like a, like a dolly to shape the metal. A little bit of heat and a couple of knocks should do it. Nice and flat. I just don't understand what it's held up on. Alright, so I figured out why the 2x2 wasn't seating properly. The issue is the back here at the end of the channel. The frame rail has these two bumps that swoop up and cause the 2x2 to kind of sit a little higher in the back. I have to basically flatten these two bumps out and lower this section just a tad to get that 2x2 positioned lower. So here I've got some Harbor Freight body shaping hammers that I'll use. This one here has the perfect shape to work on the back of the channel here and get everything nice and flat. I've also got this completely flat one that'll finish everything up. Main reason for all of this is so I can actually fit the seat brackets on here without interfering or hitting the 2x2. Here you can see there's not much to it, but it's definitely hitting that back portion of the channel, causing it to teeter a little bit.
Got everything fitting real nice. As you saw, this part had to come down a little bit, but everything fits nice and tight. Doesn't look like much on camera, but there's lots of space between the bracket and tubing, so no issues there. I may pull out a stock Cobra seat to see if the factory seats fit, just in case I ever go that route. Probably not though. I'll rig up some nice fixed backs to these brackets here. These are planted seat brackets, by the way. They're very well built, real nice quality. And back here, I have to make up some plates to weld the tube to. The plate will get welded to the bulkhead and then to the tubing, something like this. I'll also need to make up some brackets for the front where the two x two is up against the firewall. After I get those brackets made, I'm just gonna clean everything up, prep and prime all the areas, and then finally weld everything in. And that's about it. See you on the next one.